Hello, good afternoon, everybody, uh, or good evening, depending on where you are coming in from. Uh, we're excited to have you all join us today. Um, it is Thursday, and um, we will be presenting Let's Talk College Affordability. Uh, please use a reaction using Zoom to just let me know if you can see my screen or a thumbs up. Awesome. Uh, thank you, everybody. My name is Meredith Curry. I go by Mayor, pronoun she, her, and I'm in East San Jose, and I'm with the Northern California College Promise Coalition. We are a network of over 30 organizations and advocates serving over 50,000 students across 12 Northern California counties, and we believe that together we can change the trajectory for tens of thousands of Northern California students. And today, one of our steering committee members, Money Think, will be presenting. Um, we really appreciate the leadership and thought partnership of our steering committee members, champion and advocate members, and our advisory council. Uh, you can learn more about our members on our website. Um, I'm excited to introduce to you today uh, John Tamrat, Community Engagement Manager for MoneyThink. Uh, prior to joining MoneyThink, John supported students and families in education and workforce development as a case manager for Fresh Lifelines for Youth in the Bay Area, and as a program coordinator for Genesis Works in Minnesota. As a first generation immigrant to the United States, John understands how difficult it can be to navigate the US education sim, uh, system with limited resources and support, and believes that educational opportunities should not come at the cost of financial security. Welcome, John. Um, and we're glad to have here with us, Jean Marie Levy, product designer at MoneyThink. Uh, Jean Marie brings experience in advocacy, education, and technology. Uh, within the, the product designer role, she is driven by the opportunity to combine, combine excuse me, her practitioner's expertise in higher education with technology in order to design digital tools serving the most vulnerable populations. Previously, Jean Marie served at Code for America, where she led the design of an app for justice impacted communities. Also a first generation college student, Jean Marie is motivated by Money Think's mission of breaking down barriers in order to build long lasting systemic change for students like herself. Um, we're excited to hear from Jean Marie and John after the end of their presentation, we'll have a Q&A that I'll support. So please feel free to enter questions at any time in the chat. And we do hope you'll complete, this is our last exit ticket of the series and our last session. Um, so please be sure to complete it to, uh, for the last entry in our raffle. And without further ado, uh, thank you to our speakers, John and Jean Marie for joining us. You now have the floor. All right, thank you. I'm just gonna share my screen quickly. Can I get a thumbs up once you're able to see the screen? All right, uh, again, thank you again for the intro, Mayor. Uh, just like she stated, my name is John Tamrat. Uh, I'm here with MoneyThink, also with Jean Marie to present to you a little bit about Decided and how it can help you uh, in your transition of picking your enrollment decisions of where you're gonna go for your next journey when it comes to college. So for our agenda, we're gonna start in with our check-in, a quick icebreaker question to just get a feel of who's in the room. Uh, we'll do a little intro about who MoneyThink is uh, and then talk about a little bit of the college affordability problem and how we can help you solve this as you are going through this critical point in your life where you're making these big decisions of where you're gonna go for your next couple of years. Um, when it comes to your college selection. We'll also go through some possible scenarios that you might see, or maybe one of those scenarios speaks to you directly because you find yourself in that similar situation. And then at the end, we'll demo decided what it looks like from a student perspective uh, so that you can get a chance to see it in action and hopefully then go on to create your free account and use it yourself as well. So let's do a quick icebreaker uh, question. We would love to see who's in the room. So we'd love, love for you to just put in the chat uh, if you're a student, advisor, or a parent joining us for today's session, along with your answer to our icebreaker question of what college or universities are you currently excited about? Uh, specifically for the students, what colleges are you looking at? Which ones are you excited about? For parent advisors, maybe what colleges were the ones that you were looking at during this moment in your life when you were uh, thinking about which colleges to attend? So we'll give you a little bit more time to put that in the chat, and we'd love to hear them, and I will uh, shout out some of the things that I'm seeing out there. And while we're waiting, I'm happy to get us started off with that as well. I know when I was going through that phase, um, 
I was an avid sports player. So what I looked for is what college is going to give me that opportunity and Goshen College, where I ended up going, became my top choice that I was excited about because that's where I want to continue playing soccer. Uh, and I'm seeing in the chat that we have some, some excitement around UCLA, UC Davis, UC San Diego as one of those, and that we have some parents and mentors in the in the chat right now. Um, we've also got advisors, so UCSB. So a lot of UC options are the top ones that we're excited about. And we have mentors as well, and a coach with interest in Chapel Hill, uh, Clemson, that's great. Keeping those in the chat, we'd love to hear it so that way we can get a better idea of who's in the room and how we can support everyone within that progression. All right, let me pass it on now to Jean Marie to get us in, to get us started. Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Jean Marie and super excited to be in this space today. And we want to kind of kick off with who are we? Who is MoneyThink? Um, so MoneyThink is a nonprofit and we provide really easy to use tools for students and families and advisors and college mentors like yourselves in this room. Um, we have been, in a been a financial capability leader for underserved youth since 2008. And since then, Money Think, its funders and partners have worked towards student focused financial wellness and equity. So we all know kind of like that excitement about colleges and universities that we kind of just shared. We know that completing a college degree pays off. It can be a great way to propel your career and even change your life circumstances and even your families. But applying to college is a really daunting process. And a lot of you are currently experiencing students in this process or you yourself are in this process. I know for me, as the first of my family to go to college, this process was super confusing. There were so many deadlines to remember, applications to fill out. How was I supposed to find an affordable college that best fit my needs? All of this was really overwhelming, especially when you're navigating this process alone. Some quotes we wanted to highlight, highlight are, each year, 2 million students stop out of college due to financial hardship, each carrying an average of nearly $10,000 in debt and none having a degree or credential to show for it. Historically underrepresented students borrow at an alarming rate of 87% to fund their education compared to 60% of white students. These numbers are super shocking and we know that. So we want to kind of give us time if anyone has any questions regarding that or kind of what I mentioned before, you can feel free to write them in the chat as we go forward. We'll move on. So why is this process so hard? Why does going to college continue to be such a big barrier for students and families? Well, financial aid award letters are often the root of this problem. The nation's 1.7 trillion student, student loan debt problem is fueled by confusing and unclear process, unclear pricing and college costs. But first, I wanted to kind of address like what is an award letter. Um, we will throw this term around a lot, but we kind of wanted to ensure that everyone knew what that meant. Um, we're going to go through some examples later on today, but sometimes award letters can go by other names such as merit letter, school aid offer, financial aid package, or award letter. And you can receive this in various forms, um, whether that's a letter, digitally, by mail. Um, sometimes you'll have to log into your student portal once that gets set up. Decided has written a whole guide on this, um, so no need to take notes right now, but we will link it later on um, about exactly this terminology that we use uh, throughout this presentation, but also within our tool. I know for me, I got these letters with tons of numbers on them, and I had no idea, again, what was the best fit. My parents did the best they could to help me understand this, but since they never have been through the process themselves, I was left super confused to what was free money and what was a loan. Award letters use so many different types of language to explain the same thing. Less than 33% of award letters differentiate between aids and loans, which makes it super difficult for families to know what exact, exactly they need to pay. Um, we at MoneyThink want a world free of student loan debt and believe every student has the right to an affordable education. And so we have a tool to help and we're super excited to showcase that. Before we get started, I wanted to kind of showcase some examples of what a financial aid award letter could look like. So. This is a, a real financial aid award letter that someone received. 
Um, so in the chat, if you're looking at that green box, can you identify what is the free money that you would be getting from this university? Nice. So I see some are saying Pell Grant, which is correct. And so if you're looking at this, you're only getting about $6,000 of free money and the rest of the financial aid is actually loans. So the 26,000 in parent plus loans is based on your parents or family members credit approval. And it's just a really complex process. It can be super tricky because at the very end and bottom of this letter, it shows estimated out-of-pocket expenses to be zero, when really they're talking a lot about taking out loans and the really only amount of free money is around 6,000. So good catch on that. But we wanted to kind of highlight that this potentially tends to happen a lot on award letters. So we have another example that we can look at here. So I just want to give, we know it's super tiny. Let's <laughs> just give everyone some time to kind of digest it a bit. So in the green box, what is the amount that you would have to be responsible to pay? So some math potentially. Or I guess I could ask too, like how much is this university giving you in free money? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it looks like they would only be giving you around exactly. So some great answers in the chat around that idea of gift aid. So again, it's called, it's called so many different things, whether that's like a grant gift aid, it really is dependent upon the university and it can be really confusing. Um, but correct. The free money here would be 7,500. And then we want to show you also what it looks like to have a good award letter. Yes, uh, quickly before I jump into that, I just wanted to highlight for those who are trying to figure out what the math is. So essentially for this award letter, they're saying zero left, but you're actually responsible for around 39,364 that you have to make up um, between those after you take away the gift aid. So it's including the 34,336 that's going to be based on your um, optional parent plus loan and then a student plus loan. Although they say optional, essentially you have to have those to actually make that zero out of pocket cost. Now. Yeah. Thanks, John, for adding that. So what does a good order letter look like? It looks something like this. And we really hope um, universities and colleges start to do a lot more of this. Um, so in the red box, you can see your actual costs. Then below that, highlighted in the green box, um, are your awards. Then lastly, in the orange box, they're um, separated out to your loans and work study. And we want to highlight that, again, loans and work study aren't free money because loans, as you all probably know, you have to pay back and work study, um, you would have to work a university job potentially to get access to that bucket of money. So again, it's not free money, but it's potential um, money that they're speaking about here. So this again is super confusing still, but this award letter has total cost of attendance, easy to understand and separates it. Um, and then the next steps about what you'd have to do are pretty clear. So I know that was a lot of information to digest. Um, does anyone have any questions that we wanna pause on um, before I hand it off to John? Thanks, Jane Marie. I'm looking at the chat, nothing yet. Um, and I don't see any hands raised, but if we wanna pause for one more second, otherwise feel free to continue. Great. Yeah, so I'm gonna hand it off to John, um, who's gonna talk a little bit more about our tool and then um, you'll stay tuned for me um, explaining more about what the tool actually does. Thanks, Jane Marie. Um, so again, quick reminder, if there's questions that come up, feel free to post them in the chat. We will either answer them in the chat or do a live uh, answer as well. So now we went through that explanation of what award letters uh, look like, how they can be confusing or tricky, how can they can trip up our students, our families, right? So what is an affordable college? What does that really look like? 
Um, so in reality, affordability of colleges can vary enormously, right? And that really depends not only on what you're seeing on the award letters, but really depend on the student and the family circumstances, right? If you have maybe grandparents who are able to chip in money, that might actually uh, make the affordability look a lot different than to majority of students or even myself, where I was relying on myself to pay for that college, right? So that meant what is the free money that I had available? And then what loans did I end up taking um, to make it affordable? Um, so that's kind of what our tool is going to be built for is to support you to navigate that process of identifying the affordabilities. Uh, but we've also put certain metrics and markers based on the students we want to serve and support first and foremost. So that means a lot of first generation college students, underrepresented students, uh, and those students who are going to be getting Pell eligible, uh, meaning that their families may not be able to contribute as much as others. So what does that affordability really look like for them? So when it comes to that at Money Think, we define that affordability of of colleges based on what the gap would be or what is left after all of your scholarships and grants have been applied towards your direct cost of attendance, right? Um, so with that, to be affordable, a student will be able to cover the direct cost after all of that aid um, that's been applied with less than 7,500 remaining. This means as a student, you'll be able to cover the remaining by taking no more at the max 5,500 in federal loans. So not taking the parent plus loans, not taking private loans or other forms of loans. Uh, and then maybe potentially working up zero to 10 hours to cover that college bill. Uh, now, we consider school with a gap of 7,500 to 11,500 somewhat affordable because essentially then you'd be breaking one of the guidance that we provide. Either you may potentially take more than 5,500 or you're working more than uh, 20 hours a week. So that could get you into a position where you're working so much that you're not going to be successful in the classroom. So we want to be mindful of your workload as well. Some amount of work is really great to help you support uh, yourself through college, but not so much that is detrimental to your academics. And then lastly, a school that we might mark as not affordable is one where you're going to be taking a large amount of loans, which is risky uh, because due to having high monthly payments when paying back, it also is raising the risk of defaulting on loans in the future. And you may potentially be working 20 plus hours a week, which again can be very, very detrimental to your success in the classroom. Um, it's not just your academics, but it's also you're missing out on the opportunities for potential internships or activities that can help you really in your career progression, networking, and to have that successful, thriving future that you're seeking. So that's why that balance between work, loans is really important to consider uh, when you're thinking about what affordability looks like for you and your family. Now, most students do not have that resource or information and tools to get to this level of analysis, um, and you'll need both the total cost of attendance and a complete intuitive award letter. Whether you have both or not, and more often it's not, uh, decide in our guides and the resources are there to support you through this process. So now I'm gonna pass it back to Jim Marie to talk, talk through Decided a bit, and then we'll uh, explore some student scenarios as well. Great, so thanks, John. And so that's that confusing process you know, wondering what school's affordable to you, we know that is the most important decision that a student can make um, in their life potentially because it has um, a long standing ripple effect to, you know, paying off loans and it has an impact for the rest of your life. And so that's why we built Decided. Um, you can easily see what's affordable and what's not by using our tool. So here's a brief video of what you can do with Decided, but students can search, filter, and compare um, so many different types of colleges and have the potential ability to favorite them. So for someone interested in a large pirate school, um, this would be a list of schools that they would get. You can quickly add them to your list and review and compare award letters as you see. So um, we're looking through right now somebody interested in a business major um, and seeing how potentially far away it is. Um, once they click compare, this is where we're chatting about of really seeing an easy to look at one pager of side by side your school choices versus having so many different tabs open on your computer and trying to figure out what the best school is for you with so much overwhelming information. Decide it makes it really easy because it's all right here. Um, and so this person just favored at their school. UC Irvine um, is now their favorite school because it's the most affordable. It has a great graduation rate. Um, and we also talk about diversities on campus and the importance of that. Um, that overall sense of belonging for students is crucial when making their overall decision. 
Also at Decided and Money Think, we really value student input. Um, and so this is a student testimonial that I'd like to call out. Um, Decided tells you how much aid you're getting, how much you are paying, and how affordable it is going to be. It is so relieving. And this was said by a Money Think student alum, uh, San Francisco State class of 2023. Any questions before I move on? Great, doesn't look like it. Okay, <laughs> I will go ahead and jump into um, a scenario activity that will walk folks through. So for some context, this student got accepted um, and got several award letters from all of these schools. Um, they're super excited about it. They used Decided to upload these award letters, uh, they're Pell eligible, first gen student, they have aspirations of becoming a teacher, and finding an affordable college is super important to them and their priority. They also want to have a supportive community. Um, so they personally identify as Hispanic, and they're seeking a campus that has uh, students that fit that same um, ethnicity. So I know that was quick, but if you perhaps were either, or perhaps like you're that student or you're advising this student, or you know, um, the student is your child, um, please respond, please type your response in the chat or raise your hand and we can unmute you. But what school, we're really curious to know, like what school would you pick if you were in this scenario? There are no wrong answers either, just what you would think would be best. Here for Santa Cruz, potentially. It looks like it's an affordable school, um, has a fairly high graduation rate. And I'm curious to know more about potential earnings and diversity on campus. Looks like that might be the best pick. Um, there's also a response in the chat, which was a great one saying, are you considering all the factors or just affordability? That's the, that's, uh, yeah, that's like pretty much, um, you know, what a student experiences would be like, but um, the best fit for somebody can be for the student, they're really concerned about affordability um, and finding that sense of belonging on campus. So those would be their two top factors. Um, so considering all factors. Is supposed to be the answer to that. Great. So for this second one, so this student's top choice is St. Mary's College of California. They are really concerned about going too far away from home. They have already selected a major and have not thought too much about affordability um, or factor that into their decision-making process. They are just super motivated to stay close to the Bay Area where they currently live. Um, so after they uploaded their award letters, this is what their compare screen looks like. Um, in your opinion, um, you know, you could pretend this person was your student potentially, um, but what are some things that you might look out for if you were to see the screen? or if um, what stands out most to folks that this person's top school is St. Mary's. So look. Yeah, exactly. So the cost of St. Mary's, um, According, you know, once they uploaded their award letter, it looks like it's not affordable. Um, and although that they're so motivated um, and super excited about that school, um, you know, some talking points that potentially could have are, you know, talking about other options that are considered more affordable that may still be in the Bay Area. Um, we all know that, yeah, like the choosing a college is a very much like cost benefit analysis and a very much so like conversation. So Sonoma State seems close to the Bay Area enough, potentially, um, for the student where they can still pick an affordable school option. 
So that was a good point that someone um, saw the, the not affordable label right there. So I will pass this now off to John if no one has any further questions or comments on these two scenarios we showed. All right, thank you. Um, so now we're just going to just review what that process looked like. Uh, so these examples that we're giving you are real life scenarios where students have gone through this. Uh, we've experienced it uh, as a coaching team when we're supporting our students and when they've been using these tools as well. So in this first example, the student's original trajectory was to attend San Jose at the start of their college enrollment journey. But in this student's example, they end up rolling at Sonoma State. A lot of that was due to the affordability as a fifth factor that was important to them, as well as the teaching degree and programs offered, because uh, they wanted a clear pathway towards their chosen career. Um, and they felt that the CSU option fit that better as a teacher program versus a UC option, which was much more about the research aspects of it. Uh, as a student uploaded their award letters from the school they were accepted to, you can see that they had more affordable options to choose between the CSU and UCs. So with the side of the students able to take a closer look at the schools across specific factors that can impact their success at the school, like the diversity on campus, the campus environment, the graduation rate, and more specifically for the student, the major and program alignment with their career aspirations. Since the student has identified the importance of the school environment, reviewing that diversity and socioeconomics of the students at that college on their, on their list was a great starting point in comparing which schools will best serve them. That also checked some of their assumptions where they thought, UCs, they don't have anyone that looks like me, right? That might be an assumption you might have if you don't know enough people around you that are going to those schools. So when we were working with the student, one key area that grabbed their attention was also that only 11% of students who identified as Hispanic, so like themselves, were graduating from San Jose in four years, compared to the very high four-year grad rates at the other CSUs and UCs on their list. Now, there are many reasons why it may take students more than four years to graduate, but it is important to understand the financial implications that it can have. For example, your Cal grant will only be available to you for the four academic years, which means being able to graduate in four years will be most optimal since any term after that would, would be not accounting your Cal grant. Like many students, including myself, when I went through this process, I didn't always know the difference also between what is a college bill, which is sometimes called the direct cost, versus a life budget, also known as the indirect cost. With Decided, students will be able to see their costs clearly listed and broken down. Um, and since not all colleges may provide this information in your award letter, they'll also be able to access the guys that go in more detail and how certain actions they can take and help minimize those costs. For example, as a student, you can reduce the housing and meal costs based on what housing you select. So if you select a single dorm um, option, it may be nice to have, but it's a lot more expensive than sharing a quad. And that can be a saving of up to $2,000 or more alone. Decided guys also go over how you can reduce the life budget, again, also known as indirect costs that you'll be responsible for managing and paying. That may include costs like personal expense, textbooks, transportation. So opting out to renting your books or buying used books can in the end save you hundreds of dollars, if not thousands across your college years. I didn't learn that lesson until my sophomore year. I ended up purchasing new books my first year because I thought everyone else was doing that as well. But that costed me nearly $900 my first semester, not knowing others bought used or rented the books and paid fraction of what I was paying. When we asked a student in this scenario about their experiences and decided to navigate their way through college enrollment decision, this is what they had to say. When I first looked at my awards, it was a lot, it was a lot of help. Even when taking AVID, it's one teacher with 50 of us. We get attention, but it's not a lot. I'm also a visual, very visual person. So having it all in one place made it a lot easier for me to visualize what that means for me and my family when I'm making these decisions. Uh, when I was comparing my awards, I can get into the specifics how much exactly I needed. I knew that for my college life budget, it depended on, on the person. So I was able to concentrate on the clear costs like tuition and fees and housing and the free money that I was going to get to cover those costs. I would look at each individually and see what the difference was between them and then see how much more I needed for each one. The colors helped. So when I looked at San Jose and saw that it was only somewhat affordable, well, my other options were affordable, it made it a little more clear for me. I was like, okay, I'll stay away from that one. I've seen other friends who may have had red schools that were not affordable. And I, that was like a wild moment for me and I had no decision to not go to a school um, that was not affordable. Now let's look at the second scenario that we just discussed as well. In this student's original trajectory uh, was to attend St. Mary's, but that plan continued to evolve and change. And in the end, as a student took a deeper 
look into all their college options and have more meaningful conversations around affordability, location, and campus environment, and how each school will support their career aspirations with their parents and advisors. So this student's dream school from the longest has always been to go to St. Mary's. And then when they got their acceptance letter, they had their mind set on that, that that's where they're going to go until the award letters arrived and the unfortunate reality sunk in when it comes to the financial implications of going there would be. When going through this process and seeing the information presented to them, the student stated, when I saw St. Mary's was unaffordable, I broke down. I saw that San Jose was more affordable. I liked that I could see which schools were affordable, but it was really sucky that St. Mary's was unaffordable. I thought at least it would be in the yellow area and kind of affordable, but seeing in the red and not affordable was shocking and surprising. There was that hope in me saying that they gave me a lot of money, um, so I thought it would be affordable. I thought UCs were actually going to be the more expensive ones, but seeing UC Riverside as the most affordable option for me was actually surprising. Through continued conversations with their advisors, uh, the student was able to narrow their decision down to Sonoma State or potentially attending community college. Since the student wanted to stay more locally, that ended up crossing out UC Riverside, even though it was the most affordable option on their list. When considering campus environment, they opt out of CSU East Bay since it was more of a commuter school, leaving them with Sonoma as their last four-year option. Although they considered Sonoma State after careful consideration, the student didn't want to go to Sonoma and pay out of pocket since that didn't feel like they would get the campus environment they were looking for, along with the credential program they wanted. So instead, they ended up choosing to do a two-year route with the plans to transfer to a different four-year through the TAG program and transfer into uh, SF State. Again, even though the student opted out of going to the most affordable option available to them um, and opting out to start a community college, they were able to avoid a potential costly decision of 25,000 plus out of pocket costs and loans at St. Mary's that would have impacted not only the student themselves, but the parents who would have had to take out the 20,000 plus of that in loans. So when asked during our interview with, uh, with that student, if they hadn't seen St. Mary's was unaffordable, would they have continued to enroll there? Their response? Yes, probably. They told me 20,000 in loans and I saw that my mom wasn't tripping. So I was like, okay, but seeing it in red and seeing my other option, I was like, yeah, I shouldn't do this. Now I'm gonna pass it back to Jean Marie so we can do more of a demo on Decided. So then you get, get a look at to see what it looks like from a student perspective while using it this award letter season. Or if you're potentially a junior looking to get a head start, Decided can also support you with this as well. All right, there we go. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So as John mentioned, the really exciting part of Decided is the visualization part. A lot of students um, are super just confused by the process. And so hearing someone speak about like when I saw it in red was just really powerful. Um, so if someone is interested in signing up for Decided, it's super easy. Um, I'm not gonna walk through that part today, but all you have to do is click sign up for free. And all we ask is your email um, and name. And then the rest of the information that helps kind of give you a more customized profile is asked later. Um, so it's super easy to sign up and can be done pretty easily. Um, so let's say you signed up, you're using Decided, and you're, you got this award letter and um, you want to upload it. And this is kind of what we mentioned about the college search tool here. Um, I am a student and I'm really interested in staying in California um, from Los Angeles, so I want to stay a bit close to there. Um, but this is a lot of schools to still sort through. So Maybe I'll kind of filter a bit more by, I, I think I want to go to a public school, a four-year, and um, let's see what that shows me. Um, it'll show me all California schools that are public. Um, so as I sort through here and I'm kind of curious and learning, I can see quickly um, the size of the school is mentioned as well as the graduation rate really easily. Um, I have always dreamed to go to a UC. We saw that in uh, the Zoom today. A lot of folks are interested in UCs. Um, I am super excited about UC Santa Barbara. So I'm going ahead and add that to my list. Um, and then potentially Los Angeles, San Diego could work too. So let's see. Um, now here, once I click the profile, it's we call this the college profile page. So um, really excited to learn more about UCSB. 
Um, this looks like it's the total estimated cost before financial aid here. Um, I want to be an econ major. So I add that and I'm kind of looking through to see, you know, what potential earnings would look like. Um, when students use decided, they have the ability to, um, like I talked about, uh, kind of upload personal data or questions that we'd ask you about your zip code. Um, so you can get really cool things like a map. Um, in this scenario, I actually don't live in LA. I live in the Bay. Um, and so, uh, I also identify as Hispanic and we want to mention that the ethnicities are a bit limited to the data that we have that's currently reported. And we know that, um, so I'm going to save that, but it's really awesome because it'll show you based on 53% of students who identify as students of color at this institution, um, of which that portion identify as Hispanic. And so that's really important for students. We know sense of belonging is super crucial once you get to a university campus and an overall student success is really dependent upon that. If you go to a school sometimes where students don't look like you, um, it could be easier to stop out uh, kind of the quote um, data that we showed earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my award letter and then I'll go back in and kind of show what else we do. So then I'm brought here and I'm going to upload. Mm -hmm. Great. So I have my letter uploaded. Let's click done. And I plan to live in a dorm or residence hall on campus. And these options will impact um, your cost of living. What kind of war letter images should be uploaded? Ah, uh, yes. Uploaded? Definitely um, JPEGs. Oops, I lost everybody for a second. Um, we definitely recommend a lot of students sometimes will take photos of their um, desktop. And um, that photo isn't the best. It can come out a bit grainy. So we really recommend students to take a screenshot of um, the letter itself on their desktop. Um, does that answer your question, John? Feel free to add anything if I missed it. I yep. Perfect. So great. Um, then you can clearly see, so kind of taking like that image of the award letter that can be really confusing to sort through and making it pretty clear. Um, I could see that I'm getting a pretty good size Cal Grant, the, the Cal Grant rather. Um, I am Pell Grant eligible and other grants here. So if I at any point need some help, I have the ability to click that, or I could say, yes, let's go. And good news, I can go to UCSB. It's an affordable option. Um, and it shows that green thumbs up here. Um, if at any point I do wanna look back at the award letter itself and kind of see how did you get those numbers from that, um, it is saved in there. So. Um, I have the ability to zoom in and out and kind of look, take a closer look. So as you can see the side by side, like taking all of this data and calling it affordable um, is super impactful. And so uh, for a student and their families. So this looks correct. I see there's a question in chat. Okay, got it. Um, yes, if you have any questions, please feel free to chat. So um, here you can see that we have really helpful tooltips um, that will show you kind of the breakdown. So in your first year, you can be expected to have these costs. Um, we say college cost includes estimated tuition and fees and housing and meals if you're living on campus. So again, we kind of are really um, interested in explaining everything we can because um, this process, even though we've try to make it as simple as possible. These numbers can really uh, be really scary for um, anyone who's going through the college application process or supporting someone. Um, life budget. So think of this as any other costs such as commuting or eating out. And it is an estimate um, and it will be higher if you do live off campus. So we break kind of what John mentioned about not knowing that you could rent textbooks to save um, money versus buying new ones. Um, and then your university grants and scholarships. So at any point too, um, if you want to learn more about a specific term, we have these things called guides. So a guide really breaks down um, 
a lot of things that we say and decided, and it gives you really easy to use uh, next steps as well to plan for how to pay for college. Um, even some examples to ask, um, questions to ask rather, um, if you're talking to a family member or an advisor um, or working with students. So again, we provide tool tips throughout. Um, you can always change that to see what that looks like. Let's see. And then again, I just want to highlight the importance of our guides because um, it's really powerful information that can be accessed so easily on our tool. Um, and also, additionally, I want to point out that we link out the UCSB's admissions office um, if you were to have any questions or financial aid office as well. So all of these links are really easy to find and navigate just on one page. Um, and then uh, let's say you added the student added a lot of schools and so they want to compare what best, you know, college, uh, what college potentially is the best fit for them. So this is where that compare screen comes in and it's a lot of data and a lot of information and we all know students tend to have lists that are a bit long or they might be choosing between up to five schools or so, and it can really come down to little simple um some things like affordability. Um, and so seeing that in a visual representation is super important. And I think I mentioned before, I wanted to be an econ major, so I can search through to see if other universities offer that um, and then see graduation rates as well. This is a bit alarming for me to see that that graduation rate is so low, um, but a student would have the ability or family member or advisor um, to sort through these schools and um, see which best fit works for them. Um, let's see. Anyone were, have any questions? Yeah, or John want me to highlight anything in particular? What if I'm a student right now and I've got my war letter and there's loans on there, but I don't know how much is okay for me to take out? Is there any resource I could reference to walk me through that? Yes. Parents want to say questions. Very good. Um, Yes, exactly. So we have a guide about that, about um, what potential like loans look like. Let me go to that. Loans do come up a lot. Oops, I want the other one. <laughs> so how much is too much in terms of... Um, Loans is the one I'm looking for. Here we go. So tips on taking reasonable amount because reasonable for some folks can be not so reasonable for other folks. And so um, we have all of that information really easily accessible here and um, kind of explain our recommendation about the max out of these loans that you would potentially take. And I know there's another question in the chat. What about protecting students' private financial info? Parents will ask these questions. That's a great question. I mean, we're a nonprofit, so we don't, we're not in the business of like selling any data, et cetera. Um, and so all of the information is kept incredibly, like we take it very seriously to keep all information private. Um, but if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them too. Like, um, one-on-one -on -one or give like a scenario if you want to email us afterwards. Um, we have our policies and procedures laid out that I could also reference. Yeah, and just to jump in to add on to that as well, um, with our tool, uh, especially for California colleges, since we have coverage for most of the colleges, uh, a live person doesn't really need to look through it because our tool itself will just scrape the data to present it back to the student. Uh, the few times where an award letter is maybe a little bit tricky or something brand new, that's when we might have a manual review and one of our staff members may look at it. But just as Jean Marie pointed out, um, the information that we're looking at is to present it back to the students. So none of that is sold or given to colleges for recruitment or marketing effort. So we take that information very seriously and students have a little more control of that data as well, which is also why we don't ask too many questions as well. So we want students to feel comfortable sharing their zip code or ethnicity uh, if they see the value that we can give them, right? So we don't want to just ask for personal information if it's not going to be something that's going to be useful to the students themselves. Great. Any other questions about the tool? 
Um, I know we have a lot of um, advisors or college mentors in the room as well. And so we do have a great set of resources for you all that couples with this tool um, to help you navigate your student through the students you work with through this process too. What if I am a student and then I find out after creating an account that the organization I work with or college access org or my high school is using decided, how can I connect with my advisor if they mm -hmm. give me a code, but I'm not sure where to put it? That's a great question. Yes. Um, you can do that here. Um, if you are on your account and you're using Decided and yeah, your advisor, someone at your high school um, wants you to join their organization, there's a quick way to do that. Um, and you can add this code to join. How easy would it be for me to leave or if I don't want to share that information anymore? Do I have to contact the Money Think support team or is that something as a student I can control? Yeah, as a student, it is pretty simple. Um, you would just click leave here and then you have the opportunity to to no longer have that like uh, interaction with that um, the advisor part of the, the product. And I see there's a question, is there a way counselors can have a demo account? Um, we would definitely love to get in contact with you to kind of walk through what that potentially could look like. Um, if you're interested, uh, there are ways to do that. And so we would love to just stay in contact. And yeah, all accounts are free. So once you start using it, um, you can potentially add students from there and see how it works. And then as you can see here, if I change to live in Los Angeles, that looks perfect. Awesome. Any other questions or things that any folks are interested in seeing? And it's a small enough group. So if you'd like to raise your hand to be unmuted, you're welcome to do that. Uh, one question was just posted into the chat. If students enter their work study amount, can it help them see the hours it would take to get to that amount? Mm. Not currently. Um, there isn't any current interaction where a student could enter an aid amount or amount that they're getting to uh, like expect or understanding of if you work this amount of hours, you'll get this much money. Um, however, we do have a new feature being released soon that kind of addresses that work study amount and need and um, uh, kind of explains how much, how many hours you do have to work to get to that amount. So currently not right now, um, but we do have a lot of like literature in our guides about the sweet spot of working, um, how much, how many hours, because there's so much research that shows that you know, working in college can be good for the student. But John mentioned this earlier that, you know, if you're working too much, um, you don't have time for your studies and being a student is a full-time job. Um, and so I know for me, when I worked through my work study, like it was really helpful because I've had, you know, more time management, felt very motivated. Um, but that's a great point and great question. And while we're on that, uh, the, this page right now currently too, I'd love, love to just highlight the how to write an appeal, uh, especially not for only for the students, but the families and advisors, because um, we want to make sure students understand just because you receive an award letter, that doesn't mean that's where it has to stop, mm -hmm. especially if there's uh, specific things that have been happening with your family, whether it's a job loss, medical expenses, other things that have come up that FAFSA doesn't recognize that are happening to you currently, there is opportunity for students to appeal that. And that might change that award letter to make that school that was maybe somewhat affordable to becoming an affordable option. Mm -hmm. um, so we really wanna uh, have students be a little more self-directed uh, with the information that they need uh, so they can feel a little more of the ownership and right empowerment to make these decisions and knowing what they're heading towards when they make that final enrollment decision with confidence. Exactly. Confidence is like the main part of um, what we hope to encourage in both the families, students, advisors, that folks walk away feeling confident about the college they're choosing. So I'm going to stop sharing um, if that's okay. Let's see. And then.
John, you could share for the rest of the deck and answer some questions in chat. Thank you again. Uh, we want to make sure with uh, any students or parents or families who want to uh, sign up or create their free account and start using Decided, you can scan the QR code to get you started. As mentioned before, the tool is free for students and it's free for advisors to go ahead and use it. So I know there was a question in the chat if we can have a demo. Uh, feel free to reach out to us, but if you'd like to actually explore and use the tool as a student or as an advisor, you're able to create those accounts already on your own. Um, there is no, it's a quick sign up with your name, email, uh, and then our tool will walk you through how to use it. But if you're an advisor who's looking to use it with your students, especially seniors during this award letter season, maybe working at a high school or in college access org, we would love to hear from you so we can set up that account for you and provide the extra resources you may need uh, to be able to have a successful award letter season with your students. And I think we're putting that in the chat right now so you can have access to that. And while we're there, we're just gonna open it out to any more additional last minute questions on anything we presented, anything you've seen in the tool um, that you still have lingering questions for. Uh, if not, then I'm gonna pass it on to Jean Marie to go over some research opportunities. As we mentioned before, we love hearing from our students, from advisors and those who are impacted because we wanna create a tool that makes things a lot easier for you and provides the information you need to be empowered to make these critical decisions that can be very overwhelming and tough. Um, but we want to make sure you're making these decisions with all the information that you need to be successful. Great. Thanks, John. So um, if after listening to our webinar today, you're really interested in trying out our tool, um, we do have the opportunities for uh, research. Uh, we really, everything you've seen and decided has been, you know, thought of or vetted by a student, an advisor, a family member of these ideas. Like, what if we could, you know, have... Um, a map there that um, to show like how far away the college is from home. A lot of those ideas came from folks like you. And so it's really important that um, we continue that. And we have um, opportunities for you all to meet with us. So John and myself and walk through the tool and give us feedback and they are compensated. So you will be paid. Um, and all that information is in this uh, form that I'm going to put in the chat as well. Um, if you're interested, just in even learning more about it, but they typically are 40 minute zoom interviews. Um, and again, you will be compensated for your time. As we get ready to close out and before I pass it on to Mayor, uh, you can find our contact information if you wanna reach out to Judy Marie, if you're interested in research opportunities or have further questions before filling that form, feel free to reach out to Judy Marie. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you're an advisor who is looking to use the tool and want to uh, have further questions or a parent who has further questions as well, we're happy to support you. Uh, here's our contact information. We look forward to speaking to more of you. Uh, again, just thank you for NCCPC and Mayor and the team for creating this opportunity for us to present to you all. And we look forward to continuing this partnership and connecting with many of you soon enough. Thank you so much, John and Jane Marie. And uh, thank you again so much um, to Money Think for this great information. Uh, we're hearing from folks in the chat. It was super helpful. Uh, just a reminder, hopefully you're seeing, oh no, where did everybody go? <laughs> um, hopefully you're seeing the exit ticket screen. I have got to find you all. There you are. Um, and uh, just wanted to remind you to please fill that out to be entered into a raffle and to let the Money Think no team know how they did. Um, go ahead and use your Zoom reactions if you want to let us know how they did. I think I saw some um, thumbs ups. Um, and then last, just want to thank again our supporters and partners um, like Money Think um, who have helped to um, put on this webinar series for you all over the last couple of weeks. So thank you, have a great rest of your week um, and we'll stay on just a few more minutes if there's any other questions. Otherwise, thanks again, John and Jean Marie.